Hi everyone, it's Gail, and I am excited to be part of the Bee Summer Inspired Collaboration put on by Rach and Bella Crafts. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, she asked us to do projects that would be easy to follow along. So our project is going to be um, journal toppers. I've had several requests from viewers to um, to do journal cut journal topper. So that's what we're going to do. Um, she gave each participant prompts my uh, based on alphabetical letters. So I am G. Go figure. G for Gail. And um, she gave some words. Grungy, gesso, glisten, garden, getaway, golden, glue. Well, of course we're going to use glue. But um, <clears throat> I'm also going to hit the grungy and the gesso and the glisten in this project. So uh, I want to share quickly with you the, um, the kits that people are working with. Um, this is the Truly Blue. And um, we're going to be making a journal topper for these journal pages. So um, I just wanted to flip through quick so you could kind of get a sense of am I am I too far away oh I think you can see pretty well okay so um she has background pages and the kit pages it's all just beautiful truly blue this one which I'm so excited about I recently made a blue journal but you know I'm excited to make another one so and then it's also got um the long ways so that you can make the um long or tall skinny journals and again with background pages and stuff so yeah so um let's see oops sorry that one was upside down i'm like that doesn't look right <laughs> i guess just that one was upside down so yeah, and I just printed on the back. So these are ready to rock and roll. And then she also has a big batch of fuzzy cuts, which I've already cut out. So um, you know, envelopes and and you know, little little tags and various things. So that's the truly blue kit. We are going to be making a topper for that today. And then, um, and then we've got Nana's Roses, which she had me at Nana's because I'm a Nana. That's what my grandkids call me. And so, um, and I love this. How pretty is this? It's just, it's just me. <laughs> obviously, obviously it's Rachel too, I guess. But uh, yeah, isn't that pretty? So we're going to make a topper for this one too. I want to show you a couple of different, um, couple of different ways to go about it, and so I think they'll all be easy to go along with. Oh, and these were kind of uh, like extra pages for making ephemera and stuff, so printed those as well. Okay, so that's Nana's roses. Absolutely adore this kit, Rachel beautiful so there's that and then sounds of summer which is um you know kind of beachy themed so it's got these beautiful girls and once again background pages i have yet to make a beach journal um i'm a mountain girl <laughs> but i thought you know i need to i need to do this one and stretch a little bit so um yeah so anyway i wanted to just quick like flip through and show you and then we're going to get to work it's very pretty and then it's got the fussy cuts it's got some summer words which that's super fun and envelopes I printed on both sides so they'd be pretty on the inside as well. Got some journal cards and tags and journal cards. 
So, and tags. So that one's Sounds of Summer. So I have Truly Blue, Nana's Roses, and Sounds of Summer. Okay, let's talk, let's talk toppers. So I love to make toppers from corrugated cardboard. Um, and so I have cut some corrugated cardboard. I think these are, oh, that's just five and a half. Four, four wide is what I like to do, four wide. I think this one's probably six. Yep, four by six. And then um, you can adjust that. Don't take anything I say as, you know, this is all I can do. But I do like how that looks. I also have done four by sevens. And I think the one that we're going to do, uh, the first one is uh, four by seven. So, uh, I just take cardboard from boxes. I tear off the top layer. And um, sometimes it's a little tricky. Sometimes it helps to have like your awl or a sharp little tool that you can kind of go down the corrugation and kind of loosen it a little bit. Um, I don't care if it leaves some. I actually like that. So anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to show you. I just kind of kind of just rip it off, try and get a good start on it, and then rip it off. Like so. And I keep this part because if you don't rip it like I did, you can use this as a basis for... Um, for a journal top or two. You just need some sort of a base. We're gonna talk about bases further, but I wanted to show you how I got this to look like it does. So I just, I just kinda grab and rip as I can and just kinda pull off some more. I, this has a little bit too much. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, like so. Anyway, so then, then to me, that one is kind of ready to go. Okay, so corrugated cardboard, cardboard box, you know, what you get in the, in the mail. And I just, I cut them into big pieces. This one I've cut off of, but I cut them into big pieces like this. And then I cut them to size and do this. Okay, that's. That's the scoop with the corrugated cardboard. And um, so that's that. Also, I wanted along that line, uh, I think at one of my retreats, we got these at a uh, office supply store. It's called Mini Flute Corrugated, Corrugated, and it's Natural Ridges Sheets. This brand is Spectra. I guess. So it comes in nine by 12 sheets. So what I did is I took the nine by 12 sheets. I cut the, the, the 12, the 12, uh, way I cut it into fours. So I got three pieces, right? So these are, these are five by seven. So this is how this will look on a journal. It will take up more of more of the cover, right? And then, um, and then I did one that was four by six. These little extras I will keep for bases for clusters. So there's another option. Okay, so there's the there's the corrugated cardboard option of bases for your journal topper. So um, the other thing you can use is scrapbooking paper and i'm i'm going to make one corrugated topper and one scrapbook paper topper this is a great way to use like this is the stamperia paper and how they put a pattern on one side but the other side is stuff you don't really want your topper is going to be down on your journal um on the on the front page so this is going to be glued down right glue Glue, G for glue. So, 
Okay, so we'll get we'll get to that one. First, we're going to do these. I am going to this is this is the one we're going to use. It's a little bit bigger, um, but that's okay. I want to get to the second G, which is uh, gesso. So I want, where is a good piece right here? I'm going to do this on a piece of, um, of coffee dyed paper because I think coffee dyed paper with gesso on it is really cool and adds to the grunge factor, right? So I've got uh, just a cheapo stipple brush. I've got my gesso. I'm just going to dip it in and not get too much. And I'm just going to messily spread it onto my, onto my um, cardboard. Okay, that's fine. That's done. And let's do let's do these two just so we just so we have some for future future toppers. I keep actually let me show you that I keep in my in my scraps box. I keep a little envelope full of core cart corrugated cardboard scraps that a lot of them I've gessoed. Some of them I haven't, but. I'm going to put these in there, too, because we're not going to work with those today. But, um, yeah, keep a little little bit on hand so that when you need a journal cover, all you have to do is kind of grab out of your out of your prepared, your prepared box. So, we're already working on the grungy factor, aren't we? Okay. And then... Um, yeah, so glue's a given. Grungy, we got we got the start of grungy here, but we're gonna do a little bit more to. Ooh, that was a lot. Okay, let's just. It's okay. We'll just. <laughs> we'll use off that piece of cardboard. Okay. Okay, there's that one. This one, we got to start on it anyway. Okay. Just barely dip. Don't get crazy, Gail. G is for Gail. Glue. Grungy. Glisten. <laughs> okay. And the last one. Okay, there we go. So, you know, just in a matter of minutes, we got another half dozen done. Now, for my paper here, I'm just going to just put on some gesso randomly. Go every which away as I spread it on, and it just... It just gives it another layer, you know, another layer of something kind of grungy and fun. Okay, so now we have all that to dry. So let's just get rid of our gesso. We have completed a G. Okay, I am just going to set these kind of like this to dry. And there we go. So, oh, except for, hello, this one I need to make the topper. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if Rachel knows what she's getting when she asks me to participate in these collaborations. Anyway, I appreciate it, Rachel. I'm sorry. I am, I am who I am. Wasn't it Popeye that said that? I think so. Okay, just getting the 
getting the gesso off here. Okay, so then let's get started on this. I think the secret to um, a good topper is lots of layering. So I've grabbed some things here that we are going to use. So first of all, some um, going to go with some lace. And I'm going to kind of, I want to try to kind of have that flopping off the edges a little bit. Oh, wait, wait, we, ha we aren't done grunging yet. Hold the phone, hold the phone. Grunging. I'm going to take some walnut stain and we're going to go around the edges yeah <sighs> gotta keep revisiting the grungy on this you don't have to make things grungy though right you you do what you think looks good too okay now that's grungy Okay, so I am going to have a layer of lace. Yes, I am. A layer of lace, kind of like that. And then I am going to take a couple pieces. I cut these out from one of the um, digitals. I just, I just cut this out. And um, actually, this one is eight and a half, this one. So, like I say, you could make them whatever, however big you want. So, this one is going to, you know, nearly cover the cover. But I had to make it eight and a half because these flowers were very tall. <laughs> so, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put this beautiful girl on there. Like, I'm going to put her, I kind of want her above this flower. So, I'm going to do that. And then I've got some little um, crocheted things that I'm going to put on there. And I'm going to put on this Tim Holtz thing that says, sometimes the heart sees what, what is invisible to the eye. So that's basically what we're going to do. But I have a couple things to do before. Let's, let's go ahead and put the lace on because that can dry while I'm doing some of this other stuff. So... Um, on this corrugated cardboard, you just kind of have to make sure you get it on one of the mountains because the valleys aren't going to reach your peaks, if that makes sense. So I just go down one of those and then I'm just going to kind of go up and down on the mountains just to make sure it sticks. Be other stuff stuck to it, so that will help. The nice thing about doing the gesso in kind of a, a haphazard, thin in some places, thicker in others manner is it does tend to um, dry quickly, and that's nice. Okay, I'm just about there, guys. It was lots of mountains. <laughs> Some on this. Okay, so now I want this to just slightly hang over. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll grab my little spatula to smoosh that down a bit. Okay, cool. Now we're going back to grunge again um, a little bit. I I want this to look old. So I am going to take my vintage photo. I'm going to go around the flowers as I normally would. See, those are not going to show. So just kind of. And the other thing I would say about grungy is grungy can have stages. You know, I mean, there's some awesome things out there that are super grungy. I mean, just not, you know, 
there's kind of no thought at all. It, it looks like there's no thought at all. I know there's a lot of thought, but super, super grungy. Um, and then you can have just a little bit distressed grungy. So I am going to take my Tim Holtz and I'm going to go around this little picture. See if I can't grungy the edges a little bit. If I could hit the paper, <laughs> once again, there goes the coordination. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give this some vintage photo now that's going to be nice and grungy looking all right okay that will do that I'm just going to Try and get rid of the crumbs a little bit there. Okay, so now I'm going to put this right kind of on the edge. You know what? I think I want to grungy that edge a little bit. Don't want it to look as perfect as it does at the moment. So funny, some of my tools, some of them are a little bit on the dull side, so I always have to kind of find a slot that's going to do something. Okay. There we go. All right, let's do this again. Okay, now let's put this down because we have done gesso, we've done grungy, but we still have glisten. Yay. Pretty generous with the glue because, again, this is going to be on the cover. Not that it's going to take a whole bunch of wear and tear. If I was doing a cover for a journal that was going to be thrown in a backpack, I'd do it on canvas. I'd do the journal cover out of canvas, not paper, right? And I have done, I did a one for my, uh, my daughter's mother-in-law. And, um, yeah, that was kind of fun. Okay, so anyway... There we go with those. Those are nice and glued on. Now she is going to be above that little flower and like that. And I'm kind of thinking I might like to leave her corners kind of like that corner kind of bent up. I like that. Okay, so that being the case, I'm not going to glue that. I'll just glue around the rest of the edges. So, yeah, I mean, in general, um, in general, the journals I make and others make, you know, are not necessarily meant to be thrown around and, you know, in the backpack, left in the car, whatever. I mean, they're, they're on your nightstand to journal in at night or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going above that flower just a bit. I think with this one, oh, I, th I do have, I'm just going to 
I'm going to use my fingers and just kind of scrunch it up a little bit. This corner too. Okay, that's scrunched up a little bit. Now I'm going to take this and go over that, make that again, just a little more grungy. Okay. So now, 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 now. All right. So I want this up here, like kind of over here, I think midway ish. But I wonder, can't really do that with that. I wonder if I could kind of grunge it up a little bit with scissors. Yes. This comes um, in a tin holt pack like this. It's called Quote Chips. I got I got that at my Anaconda retreat. Yeah, because this is just this is just feeling a little too perfect for me. I know I'm probably making you nervous doing this with my scissors, but I promise I'm being careful. Famous last words, right? <laughs> <laughs> there we go okay get, get rid of the crumbs all right so now ooh that looks cool and get rid of the crumbs again very crummy business grungy Okay, how cute is that? Okay, so these are stickers, aren't they? Maybe they're not. They're not, but I'm going to tear that off anyway because I think this will stick better. That uh, little white piece was very glossy. I think it's better to use this like this. And the other thing I have done with these little chipboard quotes is I've pulled off the quote. And that does work, just FYI. Okay. Ooh, that's very fun. Okay. So then I have these little crocheted flowers that I think I'm just going to kind of pop down this way like that okay so let's put those on okay those are on now let's see Okay, so now I think we're to the point of glisten. Glitter would also work. So what I've got for glistening and glittering, oh, I need to scrub my mat, is um, Nouveau Crystal gr Glaze, Nouveau Crystal Drops, and you can use Ranger Glossy Accents as well. So what I'm thinking of doing with those is I think I'm just going to go over these um, these yellow flowers here. Let's see if this is going to have any in it. It's getting low. That's why I grabbed that other one. But we're going to go over the top like so. And we're just going to color in the flowers basically is what we're doing. And that is going to pick up a shine that is going to make this cover glisten. So while I'm doing this, I want to talk about the next one we're going to do a little bit. Um, something to keep in mind with, uh, with journal toppers as you're making them is, is it's a good chance to use things that are um, very, you know, like they're bumpy or textural in some way that wouldn't work well in a book. Like like maybe 
um, you know, pearls or, or like the flowers, like the Prima flowers that you can buy at the craft store or online, um, that, you know, are, are really raised and such that the cover is the place for that stuff. So, um, we're going to use some of that in this one or not this one, the next one, sorry. I'm really concentrating on my coloring here. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're going to just make these flowers be shiny and then we'll do something else on some of these too. Okay, do I want to do that one? I think I do. Looks like it's it's part of the same stem, so I think we'll go ahead and color this one too. Okay, so that is done. Now. The other thing I have for Glisten is I have Stickles, the, the um, Liquid Pearls Glisten a bit too. I have these Winkastella brushes and I think what I'm going to do with the Winkastella is I think I'm going to go over her flowers on her face and make those stand out a little more. I don't even know if you can see this very well on camera, but it's just got a little bit of, um, a little bit of shine to it, glittery type shine. But uh, the Wink Estella is much more subtle than for instance, the Stickles. So um, they make a just a little bit more a little bit more um, subtle. Yeah. I could do those two, but I kind of want her face to stand out. So that's what we're going to do with that. Now, I think I'm going to take the liquid pearls and um, let's put a pearl in each one of our flowers. So those are going to glisten as well. Okay, that one is done. Let's see if I can kind of hold it up for you a little bit. There we go. There is a topper for the Truly Blue journal when I get to that. Can you see the shine on the flowers? I hope you can. So anyway, there you go. It's just a layering on a base is basically what we got going. So I'm going to put this aside to dry because I don't want my little pearls to get smooshed. So, all right, so I got that aside. Now let's do the one for Nana's roses. So, as I said, I, I used this scrapbook paper and made a base. So I just cut, I cut this one four by four by seven because I wanted to use this piece, which is from the kit. It was on one of those um, kind of collage pages. So this is going to be my base right here. So let's Deciding, I think I might want to grungy this before I, because you know. So Nana's gar, or Nana's roses, yeah. Uh, I would say a Nana is a grandma. Another G word. I got the G words covered, people. And the truly blue one we just did, we had a girl on it. I take my instructions very seriously, Rachel. <laughs> you, 
You said, geez, I'm going to just G till the cows come home. Okay. And you can see, I mean, this is a lot thinner than... Um, than the cardboard, but works works just great. It's just really having a base. And um, once we get done making this one, I'm going to show you some examples from my from my own stash of of journal toppers, and maybe we can talk through them a little bit because I I know that um, like I say, I had some viewers that really wanted to. Um, really wanted to understand how to make a journal topper. They're so fun, you know, they're like a little mini, um, mini mixed media canvas in a way. Okay. Ooh, I got that corner real well. That's nice. Okay. And when I, when I tore out when I tore this out, I used my um, my We Are Memory Keepers tear ruler that is Jiggy Jaggy. Okay, so the edges aren't perfect there. Because again, we got to add a little grungy here. Okay. Get rid of the crumbs again. Alrighty then. So, my thought with this one, I'm going to put this kind of right front and center. Um, I've got a little bit of blue fern lace that I'm going to put at the bottom. I need to cut and put at the bottom like so. Um, and then I've got, got this little doily that I thought I'd put up there. And then, um, I was saying, you know, use your really bumpy things on the cover. And so I think I'm going to put this little flower right there. Do I want that up or down? I think I want that down. Like so. So that's going to be the basis of it, and um, we'll, we'll embellish from there, okay? So all we got to do is glue. I'm going to use my um, art glitter glue just to glue down this. Ooh, I just filled it, and it's just happy to squirt out. So... Um, I, while I'm doing this, I should tell you that in the description box below the video, I will have the uh, list and links of all the other people that are participating in the Be Summer Inspired collaboration. And so I hope you'll go check them out too. I know, um, yeah, lots of Lots of people participating. I think Edith is scrapbooking with me. I know Belinda is. Um, and let's see, she's Blossom Inspired. Is that right, Belinda? Anyway, you'll see them all in the description box, which is under video. You, you may have an inverted triangle to press on, or you may have the word more. But if you do that, it will unfold and you will be able to see the other participants. Okay, let's cut this to size. Mm, gosh, about right midway in that little circle. And my scissors rather <laughs> at a dangerous angle after using them to rough that up. Okay, so I'm gonna put that there. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for that. My husband's upstairs whistling. <laughs> Such a happy sound. <laughs> okay. So that is going to go there. Let me use a little 
get some of that extra glue off. Okay. Then I want this up here, right? Yes. All around the edges here, too. Okay. That up in the corner. Okay, and then this is gonna go right, right down there like that. So the back is pretty lumpy bumpy too, but I'm just gonna get the glue wherever I think it will meet the paper. We'll go from there. Okay. Okay, squish that down a little bit. Meanwhile, I was going to show you too. Um, so this was a 49 and market pack that I had. And then this one is, this is from Hobby Lobby. It's the paper studio. But these little bumps here, it's not, it's hard to use those in the inside of a journal because if you're writing on the page that's ahead of it it's gonna it's gonna be making a hole in your paper so really a journal topper or decorating your journal cover is the way to go to use some like that i think my humble opinion okay so I'm thinking I'm going to do a little Nouveau Crystal Glaze and color this flower just so that it, boy, this is getting empty, but it, it just kind of keeps going even though I know it's empty. <laughs> so just going to put that on this flower and maybe the other flowers that are along here too. pop any bubbles as you're doing this sometimes you do bubble okay I'm going to do these little white flowers too I think I'm just going to do the whole thing just give a little little glisten I was going to say shimmer but no we're into G words today okay Okay, and I think on the, the middle of that, I might take a little gold stickle. This one's called Sunflower. And I think I'm just going to... Oops. Oh! No, I'm not. It's like full of water. Okay, never mind. I'll do that later. But let's just put a little, if we can get it to come out. There we go. Let me, let me do this. There we go. There was just kind of watery stuff there. What if we just kind of add a little of that onto here? Just a little something extra to add to it a little bit. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I swallowed wrong. I messed that up a little bit when I put the stickles on. Okay. That fixed it. Okay, so we've got that glimmer going. I feel like once again, I think I'm going to go with the blue um, liquid pearls and put a liquid pearl right here. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. So there is that one. 
So we have a couple of journal toppers ready and waiting to make the journals from Truly Blue and Nana's Rose. Sounds of Summer, we'll, we'll see when, when, whenever I feel like I need myself a little challenge and I need to get out of my box a little bit. Okay, so that is my contribution to the Be Summer Inspired collaboration. So look for the hashtag Be Summer Inspired and you'll be able to see all the other people. Like I said, it will be down below in my description box. So thank you, Rachel. Oh, no, I was going to I was going to end and now we're not. So let's I wanted to show you guys some other examples of things you can do with journal toppers. Okay, so this one is just on embossed paper, just torn on embossed paper. That's all that was used as the base there. This one is just scrapbook paper that's been embossed. A cute little picture sewn around and then some layered lace and there you go. This one, um, this one is from my friend Frida at Rustic Prairie Gems and she did the corrugated cardboard. She did gesso. She did some other paints and then just layered some pretty things on it. Um, this one from Saved by Grace Creation is, it is, the base of this one is a piece of batting. So that works great too, right? And then this one from my, my messy brain is just on fabric. Fabric and then um, it's got a couple layers of fabric there. And then this is um, not even cardstock. Well, maybe a heavier paper anyway. So there you go. Some ideas for journal toppers. But I am super happy with how ours turned out. I really love them. So thanks everyone for watching. Check out all the other participants. Have a grateful day. Be kind always, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!